Let's have a look at the basic functions of a multimeter. Now, today what we're going to look at is voltage, resistance and continuity, as well as amperage. Every meter is a little bit different and some of them have a lot of functions such as this one. Dwell, what the hell is dwell? Don't they sell computers? Some of them are a little bit more basic and only have a few functions. It only does ohms. So we're going to look at our primary voltage resistance amperage and then we're going to make another video later down the road on how to use all the other features of a meter. So the first thing that we have to do is we have to check our meter and make sure that everything is okay. So when we grab our meter out of our toolbox, first thing I like to do, we're going to switch this over to resistance and I'm going to check to make sure that my leads are all right. So if we have faulty leads, we're not going to be able to do much of anything. Now, this is a good sign. My leads should have very little to no resistance, and the reading we have right now is indicating I have zero resistance in my leads. Excellent. So the second thing that I wanna do is I want to check, and I wanna make sure that the fuse inside my meter is good if I'm gonna go look at any amperage. So most meters, any reasonable meter will be fused. Some of the less expensive ones don't have a fuse for checking the amperage. I would avoid those and I'd stick to something that's at least decent enough to be a fused meter. So to do that, check our meter right at our workbench. I'm in resistance. Resistance is futile. I'm going to take my positive lead and then I'm gonna go in the amperage port and if I have a good fuse in my meter, I should have no resistance. On the milliamp port, if we have a good fuse, there is going to be resistance. If we had a bad fuse, it would just read OL or OFL. The final check, we're gonna put my meter back into voltage, and then I'm just gonna go right directly to a battery and make sure that my meter is able to read the battery. So you can see I am in DC volts. I'm gonna hook up negative to negative, positive to positive. And I've got 12.96, 12.95 volts. So the meter's working, we're good. On a digital meter like this, if you get your leads hooked up backwards, don't even worry about it. It's gonna read exactly the same, except you're gonna have a little negative sign on your meter. Let's dive into how to use this meter. All of our multimeters, or pretty much all of our multimeters, I should say, are gonna have a few different ports for the different functions. The COM port, which is colored black, is going to be your ground port, and your black lead is going to go in there all the time. It just stays in there, you don't have to remove it, you don't have to take it out. The lead that you do have to move is going to be your red lead. And everything is labeled and coded with schematics or with symbols, so this port right here is for my temperature, my RPM. That little symbol right there is a capacitor. I've got a diode, I've got hertz for frequency, I've got resistance, and I've got voltage. So all of those are going to be red with my red lead in this port. And then over here on the left of my meter, I have amperage, milliamps, and microamps. So you can see that my milliamps and microamp fuse is only a 400 milliamp rated fuse. And then my 10 amp fuse over here, I am good for, let's see, 10 amps for 10 seconds max. If I overload that, the fuse internally is going to pop. And let me show you what that looks like on another meter. So I've got an old fluke meter here that I've had for quite a while. And this one has a bad fuse for the amperage. I hooked this up incorrectly, blew my fuse. So what I'm gonna do, test in the fuse without even removing it from the meter, set my meter to resistance, take my red probe into my amperage port, and it still reads overloaded. So I know that this fuse is no good, I need to replace the fuse before I can check amperage with this meter. However, I'm still good to check resistance and voltage. So measuring voltage is very straightforward. I'm going to set my dial to voltage if I'm going into a wall with alternating current, I need to make sure that my meter is set to AC volts on this particular meter. All I need to do is press that button to change it from AC to DC. Some meters such as this fluke meter, you just select your AC or DC current voltage with your knob, with your selector. So to read our voltage, the negative terminal goes into our COM port or our black probe, and then the red probe goes into the voltage port. So once that's connected, power to power, ground to ground, 
And it is as simple as that. So we have a nine volt battery here. I've got my power, I've got my ground. I'll connect my leads. Let's see here. I have eight and a half volts. So this battery is discharged. And there's your voltage. To read resistance, we leave our red lead connected in the same port that we used for voltage. And then we simply move our selector knob to the resistance setting. Now, if I wanted to check the resistance of this piece of wire right here, I would simply take my two leads, connect them to my wire, and I should have a very low reading. I have 0.1 of an ohm. That's not too bad. If I had a higher reading, such as five, six, seven, eight ohms or higher, then I know that there is a fault in this wire and this is a faulty wire. Be careful as this is a static test. The best way to test a wire is with the wire loaded, doing a live circuit test. The problem with a resistance reading is the meter sends a very small amount of current through the circuit in order to read the resistance of that circuit. The meter does not have a whole lot of power. Let's find out how much voltage that sends out. Okay, so what we are looking at here, my red meter is set to resistance. It's sending a small amount of current or voltage through the leads to measure the circuit. And it is sending out half of a volt. So that's not a whole lot of voltage. So if I'm working on some type of automotive circuit, they usually run at 12 to 14 volts, and they usually run at a decent amount of amperage as well. So this isn't gonna send out enough of a voltage or enough of a current to test the entire circuit. The other thing that you have to watch for, the circuit has to be dead before you can test it. What do I mean by dead? It can't be a live wire. You cannot measure resistance of something like a battery or a circuit that's on because the amount of voltage that's coming out of that battery is going to overpower the meter. So for example here, if I wanted to measure the resistance of this light bulb, can't do it with the circuit on, can't do it with the live circuit. We would have to disconnect the circuit and then we'd be able to measure the resistance. and see that we have approximately six ohms. And now this is changing because resistance and heat have a relationship. As heat goes up, resistance goes up, so you can't actually measure the resistance of a light bulb. I just wanted to show this as an example. Well, I wonder what would happen if we tried to measure the resistance with the circuit live. Let's find out. So my light bulb is on here. I'm set to read the resistance. Hopefully I don't damage my meter doing this. and I have zero, which we just measured it a second ago, and we had about five, six ohms. So we can see right there, there is proof that our circuit needs to be dead or disconnected before measuring resistance. We'll do this again just to verify, prove it. There we go. And that resistance value is going to come down a little bit as this light bulb cools off. Neat. So. What else can we measure with our meter? We're gonna look at amperage. Volt, amps, volts, amps, volts, amps. So we need to remove our probe from the voltage resistance port. Select amperage on our dial here. This is a fancy meter, it's got different, I don't know if you saw that. It has little doors that open and close the different ports to try to help protect it so you don't put it in the wrong port at the wrong time. So we're gonna always start at 10 amps insert my probe into the amperage port. And now to measure the amperage, you have to, have to, have to disconnect the circuit. And then we use our meter to reconnect the circuit. The circuit should activate and we're going to get an amperage reading. So we can see right here, I'm measuring 0.262 of an amp or 262 milliamps. You'll notice when I disconnect my meter, the circuit dies. If we were to leave our circuit on like so and try to read the amperage this way in parallel with the circuit, not in series, 
we're essentially taking the meter, it's become just a piece of wire, and then we're shorting out our ground and our power. And that's just gonna melt the insides of the meter. So if we have a fuse meter, it'll blow the fuse. If we had a non-fuse meter, it would melt the meter and destroy it. I'm burning now. Take it easy. Health bar is burning me a lot. So always, always, always make sure that you remember to disconnect your circuit, connect the meter in series with the circuit, the circuit should activate, and then you will get an amperage reading. And now if we have a meter such as this one that has the ability to go into milliamps, always start it with the higher reading first, or the higher rating to protect the meter, protect the circuit. But I know that this only took 262 milliamps. So if I wanna get a more accurate reading, I can switch my selector over into the milliamps. And then I can take my probe, I can insert it into my milliamp port, and now I can connect my circuit. And I can see here I have 257.1, 257 right on, milliamps. So I get a more accurate reading this way. So hopefully this helps. If it did, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button on your way out. Let me know in the comments what other videos I can make to help you out. Thanks for watching. Have a good one.